Hey guys, in this video, we will be going to take a look how we can take the backup of Kubernetes cluster. So we will be going to take a look on the disaster recovery as well, like how we can set up the disaster recovery as well as the data migration between two clusters. And for this tutorial, I will be going to use an open source tool called Velero. So Velero provides us a backup and restoration solution for the Kubernetes cluster. So without any further ado, let's head back to the browser and let's create a Kubernetes cluster. So I'm using DigitalOcean for provisioning the Kubernetes cluster. So now let's quickly create the Kubernetes cluster. So let me create the Kubernetes cluster here. And I'm going to choose the location which is nearest to me. And uh, here I can give the name as K8. And I can simply click on create cluster. So this cluster creation is going to take some time. So meanwhile, we can set up the Valero CLI. And after that, we can select the Valero server as well. So uh, let's download the this cube config file as well. So you can download that from here. Okay, so the file has been downloaded. Now let me just set up this with kubectl. So for this, let me open my terminal. So now we can set up the kubectl command line to work with the kube config that we just downloaded. So that file is downloaded in my downloads directory. And here I can just run this command which is sudo cp. And I'm just copying this kube config file to my uh, kubectl config location. And if I do kube uh, cutl get nodes, I should be seeing that this is pointing to our uh, DigitalOcean server. So we can see that uh, our server has been provisioned. And now uh, let me do cube cutter, get pods. So let's verify if the Kubernetes cluster is up, up and running or not. So here, if we go to this login, so it is still creating. So we have to wait. Uh, meanwhile, it is creating. So uh, meanwhile, what we can do is we can set up the Valero CLI. So for this, let's head back to the terminal and let's set up the Valero CLI. Let me clear up this. And to set up the Valero CLI, let's head back to the official documentation. So here, in, so this is the official documentation of Valero. And here, uh, you can just go to this documentation page. Basically, they have their Git repository as well from where we can uh, download that CLI. So let's go to the Git repository as well. So this is the Git repository. And uh, if you go to the releases section, here you should be able to see some uh, source code and basically the binary as well here so you can download the binary from here and uh, you can set up the CLI so uh, for this I'm going to use the command line uh, in order to download this file uh, basically this binary and then we can set up the Valero so let's head back to terminal and let me put up the command to download the Valero so basically this is going to download the Valero uh, zip file, basically the tar file. Okay, so the file has been downloaded. Now we can just untar it. We can move it to slash users slash local slash bin. So let's untar it first. Okay, so it has been stored in this location, which is 10. And from there, we can just move it to bin location. We can just directly access it binary. So let me put up the command. And basically this command has uh, moved the Valero CLI to this location and we can just verify it using Valero version. If I do Valero version, we should be able to see something. Yeah, so we can see that uh, the Valero CLI got installed successfully and now we can set up the Valero in our Kubernetes cluster and then we will going to take the backup and after that we will also take, out, take a look at the restoration part as well as the disaster recovery. So let me clear up this first. So now let's check the status of our cube, uh, Kubernetes cluster. So I can do kubectl get nodes and I can see uh, that all the nodes are in ready state. So before that, we have to set up the AWS S3 as well because we are going to store that backup in our S3 bucket. And from there, we can restore the backup as well. So for this, let's head back to the browser and let's uh, set up our S3 bucket as well. So I'm in my AWS console and I can just simply search for S3 here. Here. This is my S3 and uh, what I can do is I can simply create a bucket. So click on this create bucket, give uh, your bucket any name. So I'm going to give gate backup and region I'm going to choose uh, AP South one and then uh, all I have to do is just simply click on this create button. So it is going to create the bucket for me and uh, 
one other thing that we need is we need the AWS access ID as well as access secret so that I can create from here just go to security credentials and from here if you go to this access secret from here you can just click on this create new secret and you can create your secret so I have already created these secrets so I'm going to leverage those I'm not going to create the new secret right now so now let's head back to our terminal and let's set up the our AWS configuration file as well so for this uh, let me just clear up this and uh, to set up the credentials first we are going to create one file and I will call it as credential hyphen velero and here I am going to put my AWS access ID as well as access secret so here you have to put your access ID as well as access secret so here you have to pass your access ID and your access secret that you will get from uh, whenever you generate those security credentials and after that you can save the file and I can verify it using cat uh, credential velero so this is the content that is present inside this file and now uh, we can set up the velero server in our Kubernetes cluster so before that let's set up our uh, environment variable as well so I am going to set up I am going to give my bucket name as gate backup which is the name of my bucket and then I am going to give the region uh, in which this bucket is created and after that I can simply install the velero so let me put up the command here so this is the command which is going to uh, install the Velero in our Kubernetes cluster. Let's hit enter and here if you see we are giving our credential file and then we are giving our region uh, that, that is exported as a, our environment variable and then here we are giving the bucket name. So let's hit enter and this is going to create some custom resource definition as well as some service account for, uh, uh, for Velero to work and we can see that the Velero is installed successfully and we can verify it using this command which is going to give us uh, the logs of the deployment if I do if I just paste this command we should see some logs so it is still in initialization phase let's wait for it to finish and let me just clear up this we can also do kubectl get uh, pods and I can do in Velero namespace so we can see the pod is uh, up and running and we can just run that command that log command and here we can see that uh, everything is uh, seems to be working perfectly uh, so now let's set up a test application and then we will be going to pick up the backup of the application and then we will just destroy that application and then we will restore that application through that backup that we created so let me create a namespace first i'm going to uh, work on that namespace only so kubectl create namespace and I'm going to create a namespace called test so my namespace has been created and now let me create a deployment here so I can do kubectl create deployment create deployment and the name of the deployment I'm going to give as testing and then hyphen hyphen image as nginx and then let's say I want to give replicas as 2 for this and the namespace where I want to uh, create this deployment is test namespace let's hit enter and here uh, our nginx deployment should create so it is created we can verify it using the kubectl get pods and in test namespace we can just verify it so it is creating let's keep a watch here okay so it is created now so now let's create a service as well Kubernetes service which is going to uh, help us to connect to the deployment that we just created so let me put up the command here and this is going to be uh, running in namespace uh, test namespace so let's hit enter and by the way this is a node port service and now uh, our service is created now we can just verify it if it is working or not so I can uh, do port forwarding here so I can port forward the service to my local port 8000 and then we can verify this in the browser as well okay we have to give the namespace as well which is test yeah so it is port forwarding and let's head back to the browser and see this in action 
so here uh, this is the this is my local host uh, 8000 let me just reload it and here we can see that our uh, service is uh, our deployment is up and running and now let's create the backup for this deployment so uh, for the backup part let's head back to the documentation and see what options we have available So here, if I just go to this uh, documentation and here you can go for in the uses section, you can go for the backup reference. And using this command, you can create a backup. And basically uh, this command has multiple flags that you can pass. So this flag is basically for uh, uh, including the cluster resources as well. And then we have some ordered flag where we are defining up the uh, uh, resources as well. And after that, we have some other flag which is include namespaces. So if you want to include any specific namespace that should be uh, created, that should be included in the backup. So you can give this here as well. And now uh, uh, even you can create a schedule, a schedule backup as well that can help you in uh, data migration as well. You can create the uh, backups on a scheduled cron time. So you can pass the cron expression and according to the cron expression, your backup should be created. So now let's head back to terminal and let's simply create a backup. Let me stop this and I can do cube cutter. I can do well error. Well error backup create. And then I want to uh, here, I am passing the namespace as test only because I want to create the backup of uh, only this namespace. But if you feel that, that you need the backup of whole cluster, then what you can do is you can simply remove this flag. Or if you want to exclude any specific namespace, then you can use the exclude namespace flag. But right now I'm going to give this flag only, which is include namespace test. And this is going to create a backup for this namespace. So the backup is uh, kind of creating. Let's uh, run this command and see the status of the backup. So here we can see that the backup has been completed and uh, uh, we can see that when this backup was started and when this was completed and as well as we can see the expiration time like when this backup is going to expire basically removed from their S3 bucket and here you can see the TTL as well that basically TTL means time to live so this backup is going to live for 720 hours which is equivalent to 30 days and you can see the expiration date as well which is, a, which is 30 days after since this backup was created, you can see this. And now uh, let's do one thing. Let's go to the browser as well. And from there, let's see if we have something in the S3 bucket or not. So here, let me go to the AWS console. Let's go to S3. And this is our bucket. So if we go to this bucket, we can see we have one folder which is backup. And inside this, we have the uh, backup name. So we gave the backup name as cluster backup. And inside this, we have some data available here. So now let's delete this, uh, whatever deployment that we have in the test namespace. Uh, uh, and then we will restore this backup uh, to our Kubernetes cluster. So I can do kubectl delete namespace, and I'm going to delete my test namespace. So once I delete this namespace, all my deployment and service, they both are going to be deleted from this restaurant. Okay, so the namespace has been deleted and uh, we can just verify it using kubectl get ns. So we can see that we don't have our test namespace and I can just clear up and we can restore the backup using this command, which is well arrow restore and then you have to give the restore name so my restore name is let's say uh, new backup restore so here I'm giving my restore name as new backup restore and then uh, here I have to give the from backup so from which backup we want to uh, basically create uh, do this restoration part so I'm going to uh, choose this backup name because we when we created the backup we gave our backup as this name, cluster backup. So let's hit enter. So our request has been submitted. We can verify it. So if I just 
copy this and run this command here we can see that it is still in progress and uh, let's uh, try it again okay so the restoration has been completed we can see and uh, let me clear up this and let's see if we got the our namespace or not so i can do cube cutter get ns and here we can see uh, have uh, we have our test namespace as well and let's see if uh, we have something inside this namespace or not so i can do cube cutter uh, get pods inside this test namespace and here we can see we have our both the pods and we can do this uh, same for the service as well i can do cube cutter get let's do cube cutter get all in test namespace and we should see our service as well so here we can see we have our service and uh, we have pods as well and now i can do uh, the port forwarding again just to showcase you that our uh, uh, nginx is still up and running so i can do cube cutter port forward and then uh, this is the service name that i have to give and the port as well let's hit enter let's go to the browser and here let's refresh this page so let me just refresh this page so we can see it is uh, working perfectly and here we can see that the connections were established to this port so now let me just clear the terminal so now if we wish to see the uh, list of backups that are available in our velero so we can simply do that uh, using this command which is velero backup get and this will give us the list of uh, backups uh, that are available in our s3 bucket and you can see all the details here so now let's do one more thing so now let's uh, create a backup in a schedule mode so that uh, the backup will be created automatically uh, whenever that uh, clone time is reached so for this let me put up the command here and basically uh, we here this is the command and here we are defining up a schedule uh, the backup needs to be created in a schedule mode and i'm going to name this schedule as every five minute because i want to create uh, the, the backup every five minute you can keep any name whatever you see and here this is the main important part where we are giving up our clone expression so here i am defining up a interval of 5 minutes so every 5 minute our backup is going to be created in our s3 bucket and here i am going to uh, include the namespaces which i want to cover up as a part of this backup and here this is the important part which is uh, kind of ttl so here we are defining up our ttl as 15 minutes so this backup should be retained only for 15 minutes in our s3 bucket and after that it is going to remote from there as well so let's hit enter and uh, let's see the backups as well so this was the command to see the backups and here we can see that we have one schedule uh, that is uh, started and that got uh, created as well uh, we can see the status is completed and this is going to expire in the next 40 minutes and let's verify this if this is available in our s3 bucket or not so let me move to my aws console and here uh, let's go to the buckets inside this bucket you can see we have restore folder as well and we are going to look at the backup and here you can see that this is the backup that we created uh, we have the backup name as well as uh, after that we have the timestamp as well so uh, this was pretty much it for this video if you have any doubts or any queries then feel free to drop them into the comment box I will definitely try to answer them and if you enjoyed this video then please give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel i will see you in the next one